and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with digital Nikki Kinzer. Kinzer, yeah. Kinzer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I was just going to say we should have special introduction, like different music when it's a tech show. Yes, it would be uh, Devo. <laughs> it would that's absolutely right. be from Devo's Deep Cuts. <laughs> I've, I just dated us madly. Oh, boy. How many yes, of our of our college student uh, clients and listeners have no idea what I'm talking about? No idea. <laughs> Devo, Depeche Mode. <gasps> oh. oh, one of my favorites. People are people, Nikki. They, they really are. They surely are. <laughs> we're, we're still talking about self-care today, uh, but this week we're talking about the digital tools that you can use to create and track new habits. Are you excited about this? I'm going to sit back and relax <laughs> and listen to you no, go. No, this is all <laughs> no, you. I am. I am excited, but I got to be honest. I was looking at the show notes and I'm like, oh my. <laughs> There are a lot of things out there, people. There are a lot of things out there. But hopefully, and this is like with all things, right? When we do these digital episodes, there is absolutely no way that we can cover everything. Every app, every option, every platform. There are just too many. And so my hope is that this conversation serves as a launch pad for you, dear listener, to, to do your own research and meet your unique needs. Because your hardware is likely unique. Your software is unique your personality is unique and you're you are unique you are unique you're a unique (laughs) and special flower butterfly that's right whatever your choice of uniqueness is and so uh really don't this is not be all end all i know there are a ton of options out there what i've done like all of these things i've tried to find the ones that are that are uh, popular some that are kind of unsung heroes uh and um geez i just i feel pretty good about this stuff so awesome. here we go. I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. Before we dig in, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Get to know us a little bit better. Listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list. And uh, you can get an update every time one of these shows goes live via email. It's a really handy way to just click right through and listen. Of course, you can always subscribe on uh, your iTunes app, your uh, uh, Pocket Casts, Overcast, any, any of your very favorite podcast listening applications connect with us on twitter or facebook at take control adhd and call us you can always call us 503-664-4ADD and i'm just going to add one more thing do it if you like the show please go into itunes and rate us oh yes those ratings it is and it's a little bit convoluted i know i know it's hard to do it because itunes does not make rating very easy you have to have an account you have to but seriously take two minutes and do it because it's it deeply helps us if you've ever heard anything from nikki that has helped you in any way or pete or me Probably Nikki, maybe me. Mm, I don't know. Whatever. I hear, case. I hear great feedback about you, Pete, right? Uh, are they, well, mm-hmm. I, maybe they didn't sleep well or something. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't judge that. But uh, in any case, if you've ever had anything helpful come out of this show, it is enormously helpful to have lots and lots of people rate this show and, and tell others that, uh, that it's useful. That, that helps others discover it. So please, thank We appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So digital self-care. When you think of digital self-care, Nikki, my, yes. dear, my dear friend and colleague, yes, uh, what do you think of? What Fitbit. The- <laughs> <laughs> That's it? I think of the Fitbit. That's your big I- thing? <laughs> yes. And I think of, um, oh, remember when we, t- we talked about this a long time ago and we both used the same app. And now, of course, I don't remember what it was, but it was for health. It was tracking for food and stuff. Yeah. Um, Oh, Spoil- man. Spoiler, lose it. I can't remember. It was, it was called lose it. Is that what it was called? Yeah, that wasn't, that oh, wasn't, it was called that wasn't a joke. It was called lose it. <laughs> I thought you were telling me to lose the spoiler. No. Uh, <laughs> and we're okay. going to talk about it momentarily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, and that, and I think of that because I remember I was talking about it and we're like, oh, we both use the same app. Obviously I have not used that app in a long time because <laughs> kind of I didn't remember the name of it. Fell off the old uh, home screen, did it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, I definitely think of Fitbit. <laughs> well, you know, the, the trick with these, with, with digital and self-care and, and this is, I think it's so easy to get lost in this process, right? But, but the, at the very base level of what we're trying to do is we're trying to, well, build new habits, right? We're trying to use the technology we have to help us build new habits around self-care, build new routines. We're trying to track our activity in a way that is unique to these devices that, yes. in, that gives us incentive 
to continue to build those habits, right? That tracking activity and, and those sort of rewards that come from that tracking, that is incentive to continue to develop these habits and cement these routines. And then to really log and internalize our results. And this gets into how we can use technology to help us to help develop our mindfulness around this thing. So those are the big three areas to build new habits and routines to track our activity and to internalize those results so that we can change our behavior. And and so I want to start with just talking about the the tracking activity part, because that's the one that everybody thinks of the most, right? It's it's we are in the universe of wearables right now. Everybody is making a wearable. And I don't mean like shoes and belts. I mean the digital tools that you <laughs> right. wear on your person, right? Do you have a Fitbit right now, Nikki? Are you, you, are you one of the Fitbitters? I, I did. I may have just I made d- that up. I did have one, um, and then it, it got lost. Yeah. Or was I it think a it bracelet got lost or was... with the Lose It app. What? <laughs> I no, had, my first wearable was a was a a, a um, it was a Fitbit, but it was before they were bracelets, and so it was the kind that it was a little pill, and it had a little digital screen, a little tiny thing, and it has sat in a little rubber kind of gasket that you could clip on your belt, and I loved it. But one day it uh, it fell off my belt while I was mowing the lawn, and I mowed it. Oh no! Yes. Yes. Well, there goes all your tracking. Well, right. That was that was the problem. It was it was very frustrating because at the time this was several years ago. At the time there was no way to wirelessly get the data into my device, so I would have to use it for a couple of days and then when I plug it in to charge it, it would sync all the data and that was pretty frustrating. And so, um, you know, now our choices are limitless, right? From Polar to Misfit to Jawbone to Fitbit to Xiaomi to Samsung to Apple, everybody's got a wearable. In fact, Oral Roberts University I just read is one of the I don't know if it's the first certainly one of the leading edge universities that has actually mandated Fitbits for all students, right? Really? So, yeah. Interesting. I've never heard that. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a unique atmosphere at Oral Roberts. And so I, you know, I don't know if you've never been there, there are giant praying hands of Oral Roberts reaching out of a giant fountain. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, definitely a, a religious backed school by the, the uh, Oral Roberts was huge in the seventies, eighties. Uh, and so, but but they have always had at this university a a real focus on uh, a kind of human health, right? On on physical fitness as a part of spiritual and intellectual growth. And so, uh, yeah. I found that interesting when I read that this morning. I, one of the things about all these wearables that we can get lost in the sea of devices is that people that I run into don't realize their phones are already capable of tracking their physical activity, right? So uh, if you haven't explored this and your iPhone is up to date, it, generally if you have an iPhone 5S, I think, or later, you're in pretty good shape. You can open the health app and see how many steps you've taken in a day. If you if you tend to be zealous about keeping your phone on your person, you are carry, you're tracking your activity, your, your paces, your miles walked in a given day, uh, your flights uh, up and down, how many flights of stairs you've gone up and down depending again on the device you are tracking your activity and you may not even know it so many android phones uh samsung latest model phones they're already tracking these devices if your goals are modest Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of your fitness uh you you may already be tracking the data that you want to change in yourself so just take a look at what device you are already using and see if it's already equipped uh, to do what you want to do the bottom line is these wearables they do what we really we've talked about this so many times what we really struggle to do ourselves is to keep desired behavior front of mind after we've passed the habit honeymoon phase you oh, know what yes. i mean well yes because that's the thing is that honeymoon phase is kind of a trap because you get the Fitbit and then you're really excited about the Fitbit or whatever it is that you're tracking, you know, or however you're tracking it. And, and then you lose it. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And, uh, or, you know, I, didn't I just mean that joke to land so hard. <laughs> I know. No, uh, you know, but with that aside, I, I'm also thinking of my husband, which I know he was in that honeymoon phase because he had a Fitbit too. And it was like, you know, for the first week, it was so exciting. You know, look at him. You know, he's got his Fitbit. <laughs> you know, he's tracking sure. everything. And uh, and looking at the statistics and, and how he slept because I remember that was on there too. Uh, but yeah, then it and then it fades. So how do you get away from that? How do you get past the, the, the honeymoon phase to where it sticks? Well, that is the – that's one of the most interesting things. And I think for – 
part of the trick is figuring out how the device can support another invisible area of your life that you already need it to do. And that's one of the reasons these watches, like the Fitbits that tell time, the Apple Watch, the Galaxy Watch, uh, the Moto 360, right? These devices that are tracking your activity, all you also have their dual use, right? So they're also yeah. on your wrist to tell you the time, which means you are incented to put it on every day, even if you are falling off of your Regardless, habit. Right? Right? Mm-hmm. right? That's super useful. And that's where my my original Fitbit, you know, had I not mowed it, uh, you know, likely would have fallen into the hun- the habit honeymoon phase. Uh, eventually, it would have been yet another device in the drawer because there was no second use. It was just for tracking. I'm not a, a training for a marathon. I'm not, uh, you know, training to climb a mountain. I'm not doing those things. So I have no other reason to wear it. But right. I'll tell you, I wear my Apple Watch every single day because it's on my wrist, giving me notifications, emails, time, and also, the added benefit is it's tracking my heart and my um, activity throughout the day and is giving me reminders to to be active. And that ends up being really useful. So that dual use nature is really important, I think, to find a tracker that so does too. that. Yeah, that's going to get you past it right. for sure. The honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't want to the, the very best trackers. They allow you to track the set of behaviors you're trying to change but they don't track too much at the expense of accuracy or clumsiness or confusion. You still have to be able to use it. And, and if it is, if it's trying to do too much, if it's an all in one device, it may be, uh, it may suffer from, uh, not being able to track at, at the, at its very peak, the activity you really want to change. If you want to track your sleep, uh, there are dedicated sleep trackers that do that very, very best. If you want your self care regimen to include, I need better sleep and I want to track this and collect data on it you better get one that is really dedicated to tracking sleep because there is a wide range of these all-in-one devices, including phones, that that claim to track sleep but don't end up giving you solid data. So, or it's not accurate. Right, or it's right, somehow. Yeah. right. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the, the next thing about these best trackers for changing habits is that they offer you reminders when you are not reaching your desired change, right? Um, and, and the example, again, the Apple Watch tells me every hour if I've been still too long, whether I've been standing at my stand-up desk or sitting down at a table, it says, hey, stand up, go take a walk, 60 seconds. And then it, and, and so it pokes me. And that reminds me because I have totally lost track of time. I'm probably rat holing on something or I'm hyper focusing. It is a physical disruption that tells me to go take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Right. That is hugely important. Very important. I like that. Yeah. That final one is that it it should, if you're going to be serious about tracking data, it should connect to your overall ecosystem of data. Right. Because Mm -hmm. there is an ecosystem. All these things track in an ecosystem around your health and all the major manufacturers have have one. Uh, So does the data of your wearable land where you need it to land? For example, uh, Google Fit is Google's uh, health tracking and fitness tracking ecosystem. So you can buy, you know, your phone and your heart rate monitor and your watch, all of these things, make sure that they sync into your Google Fit account if that's where you keep your uh, aggregate data. Uh, Apple Health is another app that that is on your iOS device. It, it keeps track of everything in there from your sleep to your calories burned to, I mean, it is an incredibly rich set of data but you can, and you can buy specific devices that track your blood sugar levels that wh- whatever i mean all these these health devices apple health becomes the planet in which all of your data resides and all of your devices orbit around samsung health is another one for the samsung phones they they abbreviate it s health shelf which I think is a really unfortunate name, but the idea <laughs> is the same, right? It's yeah. that ecosystem. So many of the manufacturers and app developers have these ecosystems. So make sure that your data, if you're going to be serious about it, make sure it's all going in one place so that you can go to your doctor. I just had a, a physical on uh, on Monday. And so I went in and I opened up my Apple Health app and my doctor was able to see, here's my uh, trailing heart rate. Here's all the stuff that I've been tracking, my levels of activity. And he can look at it and it's all been collected by data, not self-reported by me, right? It's it's measured so i can't lie i can't trick it and he can say you're not exercising enough you're not sleeping well enough you're not whatever so that's uh, i'll move on but that any any questions so far 
No, that's great. Right. Good to know. Okay. So now we get into this sort of logging and internalizing results. So let's talk about some specific apps around these big areas, right? First, we get, we've got general habits. And, and there are some really great apps that help you build specific habits around self-care. And they're in this sort of general category because they aren't necessarily around, you know, fitness or sleep or food, whatever. Um, but they do help you change your behavior on a nice sort of daily basis. And so the first one is called Productive. Productive is a really simple little app. It is uh, for iOS only. Um, and what it does is it helps you build good habits and organize your life. And I really like this one key feature because there are a lot of apps that let you set habits and get reminders, right? Mm -hmm. So I could say, for example, I need to drink more water. And and for and so for productive, I can go in and say, I want to drink more water in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening. And it'll give me a reminder at these various times of day to go drink more water. And all I do is swipe when I've had a glass of water. But what's really cool, cool, it is really cool. It has, it comes with a giant library of potential habits. So as I was browsing this thing, you know, I was thinking, oh, look at that. I have, I have really wanted to develop that habit. I wasn't even thinking about it when I downloaded <laughs> the app. But, you know, for example, I need to take my medication in the morning and in the evening. And that's something, you know. It, oh, that's a good way to remind right? people of that. Oh, when you, and okay, when you good. open Productive, it shows you here are your morning habits, here are your afternoon habits, here are your evening habits. So I need to stretch every day. I need to stretch in the morning and the afternoon because I'm pretty tight. So I need to do my do all my beauty stretches. <laughs> so I have a little habit that says, here, stretch this. And when I've done my five minutes of stretching, I, I do that. How, how about I need to practice the guitar for 10 minutes? Okay, here's a little habit. I, I want to do that every day. So that helps you kind of just remember the things you want to do every day, and it lets you group them. That's the really unique part that I like. The morning and afternoon, it's such a simple <laughs> I, display. I have to just say, I have this... <laughs> I have this picture of you, Pete. I'm going to drink my water. I'm going to do my little stretches. I'm going to practice the guitar. And you do it all like do. in the half hour. Do you know hour. what I like, do? I boom, do. Boom, and boom. I do this. You should see my Thursdays are a mess because I take my medication. I practice the guitar. I clean the cat litter and I take out the trash all in about 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> and you have and a no, little reminder for yes, each one. Everybody That's knows. awesome. Don't talk to dad when he's in habit mode. Don't talk That's to him. Right. When he's in beast mode right now. Don't even do it. So, but what productive. a great way to, to not only be reminded, but like you said, to group things together, because some things make sense to group together that yeah. way. So, you know, adding a little bit of structure and routine during your day to make sure that these things happen. I, I love it. Great, great thing. And yeah. I would, and that one is iOS only, but for my Android uh, friends out there, there is a cross platform app called Coach Me habit tracker and there's a link for that in the show notes as well and it does something it, it's very similar it has flashier images it's a little bit uh it, it's a little bit um uh, busier of an app and it it but it is again really robust and it comes from coach me which is a uh, they have it's a rich kind of coaching network so if you need coaching on something they have this network of coaches that you can subscribe to to uh help you you know be a better leader or help you develop new habits right you can you can join this network and and, and if you need call. ADHD coaching you can call Nikki Kinzer yes yeah don't go for ADHD coaching at coach me because <laughs> that would not be good but their software the habit tracker comes for uh, they have it for watches and and phones and That's Pretty cool. hand, and the web, so it's and it works the same way. It works very similarly. Yeah, so, similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now we have, I have a couple of uh, general habit follow up items. The first one comes from Mary, a college student who wrote us a, a while ago about a terrific app uh, called Swift Time. What she says is it has a few <laughs> unidentified Chinese symbols that have not actually been translated yet so, so if you don't know chinese yeah. you might not know the exactly part, what they're talking about yes. but you're building a habit which is good so. right for the most part i think uh, i think you can work around it i downloaded it and it's pretty sweet I, I she says i chose to ignore those and appreciate it for its wonderful ability to keep me aware of my time you set your wake up time and your set off time and select as many 10 minute intervals as you want let's say you wake up at 7 and leave at eight fifteen. at seven thirty five, the app will bing and announce 40 minutes left you don't have to turn off each alarm which is great I can leave it in my bathroom counter and hear the time reminders without having to stop what I'm doing to silence an alarm and keep it from waking up my roommates. It's free. It has been great for her morning since college schedules can be tricky and constantly changing. 
Absolutely. I like that a lot because, yeah. you know, that is something that, that that's a, you know, a strategy that I talk to with my clients all the time about, especially bedtime routines. Remember we talked about that just a couple of weeks ago, you know, working backwards. If you want to be in bed by 10 o'clock, what does that mean? You start your routine at nine. So setting these reminders, this would be a great way to do that with swift time is to, you know, nine o'clock. Okay. Time to get ready for bed. Nine fifteen, nine thirty, nine forty five. as many reminders as you need to, to start winding down. Um, great way to use technology into a strategy that is really useful and, uh, can definitely work for people. Well, and the next follow-up is very similar, uh, and really cool also because it sort of combines swift time and a wearable. So this is called the watch minder. It's a vibrating watch and reminder system uh, and it's super super cheap uh, mm. which is so great it, it comes in four colors it is 60 well it's not super cheap but 69 dollars. and in the in the spirit of um of of wearables it's super cheap right, right so yeah. it, it's kind of a sporty looking watch and what it does is you you set it up uh, on your app and you can set up to uh you know 65 pre-programmed messages and 30 daily recurring alarms that actually give you a vibrating alert on your wrist so that you can uh you can set these same same kind of alarms, but they're they're right there with you to say, hey, pay attention. Hey, what are you doing right now? Hey, you know, brush your teeth. Hey, and it just keeps going throughout hmm. throughout the day. And so, um, it and that is, came from a listener too. That right? also Wasn't that, that a, came from yeah. Katie. So Katie, Katie picked this up, and she says, "I got a new gadget, Watchminder. I got two: one for my six, almost seven year old ADHD, ODD first grader, and one is for myself. I hope you all review this one in your reviews soon." And well, I am a huge gadget person, and I think this is a this is a really cool one for if you just want to address this particular issue of being poked and reminded throughout the day to to uh, build this. New habit. This is a great way to do it. Well, and I have to say, I think it's cool that she's having her um, child use it too. Great totally. idea. They probably love having a vibrating watch. What child would not like that? Oh, that would be fun. Exactly. I think it's yeah. just perfect. That's exciting. So, one of the things about uh, self care we've talked about is sleep and the importance of having good sleep. Oh, yes. Right. Well, there is, there are, uh, again, there are wide. Uh, range of tools for tracking your sleep. I'm only going to talk about one, and it's kind of the big bear of this market, and it's from the company called uh, Withings. I call it Withings. It might be Withings. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but it's the Withings Aura. And the Aura is a connected alarm clock and optional sleep tracker. So what it does as an alarm clock is it it is tracking constantly uh, your sort of your sound, your temperature, and the light in your room, and it's telling you if your sleep environment is sound, right? And then when it's time to wake up, it wakes you with a light program so that it can help you adjust to daylight, especially in, in our you know sort of northwest. Oh my goodness, it's. Dark. Still dark outside. It's dark in the morning, really, really late. It's dark all the time. It's dark all the time. <laughs> it's really dark in my in my mind all the time. So that that's one of those interesting things that I really like about it. But you can also connect to it. Uh, it, it has this beautiful app that works really well, and it you know it it shows you here's what your temperature range is in your house at night, which is probably too hot. Uh, you know, you should be mm -hmm. between sixty five and seventy two degrees. My parents said it set theirs at fifty eight. They let it get really cold at night because they like sleeping like they're in the, you know, Arctic, I guess. <laughs> That's uh, right. But they also track, you know, is is there too much light? Is there too much sound? And then you can track it to this sleep motion detector. It's an uh, a sleep sensor that you put under your mattress which will tell you your sleep duration, sleep cycle variation, the time you spend awake, uh, and it wakes you at the best time of your sleep cycle. So this sleep sensor you know, communicates with the alarm clock and actually says, hey, it's time to wake, uh, to wake Pete up, so let's turn on the light, and it gently oh, turns on the light, and then it eventually starts playing some sound. It's connected to Spotify. If you have a Spotify premium membership, it will uh, it'll actually uh, offer you a whole bunch of pre-programmed sleep options. Otherwise, there, there are some other connected options for that, too. But it, it's, uh, it's a pretty robust uh, sleep tracking uh, uh, option if, if sleep is, well, about, is something you're, that's important to you. And you know, 
I have a comment about this one too. I have lots of comments today, which is unusual <laughs> when, it, when it comes to technology. But what I like about this is that, you know, sleep, you know, when we talked about sleep, we talked about the, the routine and we talked about different ideas on help, you know, how to help you get to sleep in my blog. Um, but what this does, I think is kind of that, that pre-work that has to be done. Like, let's try to see if there's a problem and let's identify that, you know? Um, and if it is as simple as turning the temperature down or not having the nightlight in the room because it actually is a distraction and you didn't even know about it, right. um, you know, what a great thing. So I, I like, you know, I would recommend people that are having a difficult time falling asleep or waking up in the middle of the night to look at this and see, it, is there something there that they can kind of tweak and does it make a difference and pay attention to that? Um I think that's really helpful. Yeah, I like that one too. I like it because, as you say, it does track the environment. And, you know, I've had people tell me, you know, what about, why don't you just use the Apple Watch? You know, you can download a sleep app and it tracks your, it'll tell you when you're sleeping and it'll plug in. But the problem is, a, I've worn my Apple Watch all day, and likely it needs to be charged at night, and so I'm right. not wearing it. That is a that's a challenge. There is a you know I've read online somebody has a uh, had posted a a um, you know if you want to wear your Apple Watch to track your sleep, here is your charging schedule that will help you wear it all day and wear it all night, and when you need to absolutely guarantee you're charging it. So like when you're in the shower, you charge it for 15 minutes, and when you're eating breakfast, you're sitting down, you charge it. For, I mean it's just it's just too much to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, so that doesn't really work for me. I prefer having something that, that like the aura that actually tracks the universe of sleep issues that I'm maybe dealing with. So uh, I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Then we get obviously, you know, the, the kind of the, the most obvious category of self-care is exercise. Um, you know, we've talked about some of these before. The two uh, exercise apps that I, I really recommend you checking out if you haven't used it yet or, or use them yet are Runtastic and RunKeeper. And uh, both of them are kind of the the um, uh, the big dogs in the in the tracking market. Strava is another one that's big. Nike Plus has been there. The Nike Fuel has been there for a long time. But but what's nice about these two is that they they have the most well well-rounded, I think, um, uh, set of features, and they tie in very well generally with the ecosystems I was talking about earlier. For example, though, uh, RunKeeper does not sync your running data or walking data or exercise data with Samsung Health while it does plug into Apple Health and Google Fit, for example. So every time you go for a run, it goes into these other apps and says, here's here's Pete's run data. And so this earns him extra calories in his nutrition you know, app and, and tells how his heart's doing and that kind of a thing. That's what you want to do. Both of them will let you plan your runs. They let you plan maps and, and store these maps online. You can then share these maps with the world or keep them private. But it, it allows they allow you to run or walk you know, against yourself. So you can say, hey, I did this you know, this mile in 15 minutes yesterday, today, I want to try and get it down to, to 1430. And it, it'll tell you as you're, if you have headphones on, it'll say, Hey, you're catching up to your opponent, or you're, you're behind your opponent speed up, you know, when your opponent is you from yesterday. So it's a, it's a pretty cool, <laughs> uh, it's a pretty cool concept. Uh, I really like the way it, it tracks the, the data there. I, the, the only other, um, the running sort of walking running program that I do want to mention is zombies run, which I may have talked about years ago. It's been out for a long time. It is, if you want to gamify your exercise, zombies run is really, <laughs> really fun. You put on your headset and you listen to an audio program and it's telling you, so you, you just leave your house and do, 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 you're listening to music or your favorite podcast. And then you hear this, <laughs> and it turns out as you turned a corner, you ran into a, a, a horde of zombies. Wow. And, uh, and it's, so you better run fast. Yes. And it, yeah. And so you have to speed up and does sort of, if you, if you pay for the upgrade, it, it does intervals. So you don't even know you're running intervals. You just know that more zombies are here and you have to turn or run or <laughs> get to, to this next location and, and pick up, uh, you know, pick up supplies to build your base and then get back home and it, it's a way to add a level of fantasy to your runs that make, make it a little bit more entertaining if you're struggling for that so if you're, yeah if you're, i like that absolutely if you're a fan of the walking dead join a million other people <clears throat> you know i wrote a blog post uh, when we did the exercise i uh series i i wrote a blog post about fun you know kind of more unusual exercises that people maybe haven't thought about i'm going to actually put this in it i'm going to update that that blog post and put that in there because you should. i think that's kind of fun i oh. mean i think that that would make somebody's run a little more interesting it is super I like fun that. yeah it's really fun so uh, i i have it and i don't use it regularly but some days you know it's really hard to get out and run <laughs> It'd be and hard not 
to laugh, it especially is. like when you first are, are <laughs> excuse me, when you're first using it, it'd be hard not to be laughing while you're running. You well, know? <laughs> yes. And to that point, when you're running in, in, at a crowded time of day on a particular path. <laughs> and you're running, you're running really running, fast. You're running really fast. And you realize like people are looking at you and you have a look of just abject terror on your face. <laughs> It's I kind of haunting. That. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So anyway, it's worth checking out. Okay, the last, I, I know we're, we're going a little bit long, but I have two more categories I want to just talk about. The first one is, is finding the right tracking solution for your food because you, you know, you want to make sure that you're eating well and, and knowing what you eat and what everything that you put in your mouth represents to your system, to your body is really important for self-care. You, you may not realize just how much sugar is produced in, by eating an English muffin. You know what I mean? Oh, like so it's true. just, it, and, and having that impact uh, compared with what your recommended caloric intake is and nutritional intake is, is really important. So there are a couple of apps that make it super easy. The one we use and the one that Nikki should be using, but isn't is lose it <laughs> as we've talked about. And I'm I, never going to forget about it now. It is. I, I adore lose it. I've been using it for a long, long time. It is really super easy to use. That's for sure. It is. It is really easy. It is. Um, it, it, it's super easy to to um, uh, track your food. It has a barcode scanner, so you can just scan the barcode. It has a, a big library of of foods from restaurants, uh, of menu items from restaurants that you might uh, partake in uh, regularly, and you can add your own recipes. So you can say, you know, we make we make this thing called Yums. If you haven't been to Cafe Yum, uh, oh, if yes. you're in Oregon at all, you should check out Cafe Yum. There are a couple really of them. Good. Uh, is just fantastic. And we actually added a yum as a recipe by ingredient. And now I can say I've eaten one serving of yum as a bowl of rice and beans and things like that. And it tracks everything that goes into the yum as a recipe that I can then use over and over and over again. So it, it has a really cool kind of mechanic. Once you've set it up a few times and done it a few times, it's really easy to keep your keep your uh, your intake solid. And then Lose It is also a destination for all of your other fitness activities. So if I go out for a run, Run in Runtastic, that Runtastic run appears in Lose It, and Lose It will then tell me, hey, as a result of your run today, you have earned 300 more calories. So you better eat more because you're you, to stay healthy. You've got to eat more and and drink more because you sweat and whatever it is. So it, it keeps you up to uh, kind of balanced, and I really like that. Yeah, that's cool. My fitness pal is another that it, it, that is more the partner to uh, Run Keeper. They have a partnership together, and so it does a similar kind of partnership. Giant library of foods, easy to enter your food, and it and with in partnership with Run Keeper, it tells you here is what you've earned today as a result of your work. So, and I like that. I like earning things. Yes, yes. And and that leads me to the only uh, this was I said months ago, well, 2 months ago, how excited I was about my, uh, a Christmas acquisition in my house related to data collection. And that is a, another Withings product, the Smart Body Analyzer. I adore this thing probably irrationally. <laughs> At uh, least you're honest. It's it's a scale. And so yeah. you step on it every day and it tells you, here's what your weight is. Here's your BMI. Here's your fat mass. Here's your heart rate. Uh, and it syncs it automatically wirelessly or, or uh, over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the app on your phone. Uh, and it is also partnered with my fitness pal that we just talked about. Uh, you can set your weight goals. You can set all of this, uh, you know, everything you want to uh, track. And it tells you right on the screen as you step on it, here's how you've been. It gives you the last week. So you can look at your little graph. It says, hey, you know, you're down 0.3 pounds today. Way to go. You know, you've done something right. And then when you look at the app, it, it tells you more detail and you can add notes to your to your weight tracking. So you can say, hey, you know, Thursday last week, I just got back from a trip and I wasn't mm -hmm. very good to myself. So my weight was up. And you can leave that as a note on the graph so you can see why these little spikes occur. So you can take it as far as you want to take it uh, in terms of data tracking, but having the data is really useful and not having to think about it is really, really cool. So um, I, I really like this. This particular model also does air quality screening. Uh, it's connected, oh, obviously. Yeah, it's connected through Wi-Fi. So when you stand on the scale, it'll tell you the weather for the day. Um, uh, you know, highs <laughs> you and weigh lows. this and it's going to be nice outside. Yeah, so, so you can wear shorts it, and a t-shirt. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it'll tell you, Hey, you know, your air quality CO2 level in the room is, is, uh, such that you may want to consider opening a window for a little while, you know, that sort of a thing. Wow. 
really cool. So there are two models. One is the wireless scale that just does weight and BMI, and the other is the smart body analyzer, and that does uh, weight, body fat, heart rate, air quality. So uh, there, it, it's a robust scale. I thought it was going to be ridiculous, and now I weigh myself every morning, and it is super accurate, and my doctor loves it. He can see exactly what my weight is. They don't have to, you know, they, they weigh me at the office, but it's always at a weird time of day, and I'm always... You know, I'm. I weigh more. It's never it's, accurate. It's never accurate. It's never accurate. And yeah. so this is this is something that that uh, uh, that my doctor has really said. You know, this is really useful. It's useful to have this kind of data and be able to just look at it. So that is the smart body analyzer. I love the scale. Finally, and I, then I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Three quick recommendations for mindfulness because once you have done all this connecting and tracking and stuff, you got to integrate it. So I have two, right. two, three things. One of them is the mindfulness bell. This was my wife's recommendation. It is a ridiculously simple website. It is as low tech of a high tech solution as I could find. It comes from the Washington mindfulness community. And all it does is tell you, uh, is, is help you say when you want a bell to ring on your computer, right? I would like a bell to ring every 15 minutes. I would like a bell to ring every 30 minutes. I would like a bell to ring randomly between 15 and 60 minutes. I would like a bell reminder at a specific time. And the whole purpose is while you are sitting there working on something that it bings you to kick you back in from those moments when you find you're stuck in a stare out the window or you're picking at your fingernails or you're drinking way too much coffee or whatever. It just reminds you to stay present in the exact moment that you are living right now. And I think that's a really cool idea and very, very too. simple. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that what comes to my mind is having it be a reminder for you, not necessarily all the time every day, because there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And this is obviously one of them. But I think this would be really helpful for me when you're like done with work. Yeah. And you're at home and you're having dinner. I know this sounds kind of sure. weird, no, but yeah, I like this. Yeah, having that that bell go off just to, in the background to remind you to stay mindful and present with your family, you know, um, or you're at a game watching your child, uh, you know, play basketball. It's like. Uh, people might think you're kind of weird because they're hearing bells. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, right. but I mean, I just you know, I take that as being outside of work just to remember, hey, leave work alone and focus on what's in front of you or what's important, you know, right now. I like that. Yeah, I like that one too. Simple. That very simple. So that is the, uh, that's the, the mindfulness, the link in the show notes, the mindfulness bell. Um, the, uh, and I'll make this the last one. Day one is, as you know, we've talked about this a number of times, uh, day one. It, day one, two. <laughs> Day has one, launched. Day one two is launched <laughs> for uh, for the Mac. Day and, one and two iOS. that just sounds funny. It is. I I love it. And and again, this is uh, Mac centric. But again, use this as an opportunity to research what you you know. If if you find this is useful, then then think about it in terms of a practice because I have a challenge for you. Uh, I use day one every day, and I use it because it allows me to set daily reminders to write about what I'm doing right now. It says, hey, you know, just wake up. Here's an alert write down a sentence or two about what you're experiencing right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I do that. And I use it to catalog the work that I've done that day. What did I accomplish? What am I most proud of about my day? I always sort of ask myself that question. Uh, what are my kids most proud of? That's become our dinner conversation. You know, what's the one thing you're most proud of accomplishing today? Or, or the, yeah, the thing nice. you're most proud of sharing with somebody else today or, or something. And, and so my challenge is, is this. Both my wife and I have, are in the middle of this. Delete Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, whatever your your social network of, of choice is. Delete it from your phone. And every time you would otherwise be tempted to check in on Facebook, open day one and write a sentence or two about the experience you're having right now. It is absolutely private. It is saved for you as long as you keep your, your phone up to date and, you know, migrated. Uh, and take a couple of pictures of what you're looking at right now. And at the end of the month, share it with your spouse or partner or friends and, and see what you get out of that experience. Uh, so are you saying don't ever get on Facebook? No. What I am saying is l generally, uh, you're probably not missing as much as you like to think you're missing. 
by jumping onto Facebook. And probably if you're standing in line at, at a store or at the DMV or something like that, and generally you're just spending away time, your, your brain will be better, uh, impacted. You will build some new pathways. If you create something new for yourself and find a way to integrate what you have, what has happened to you or what is happening to you right then, uh, in writing, um, then you would be by just spinning up the Facebook timeline. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Interesting. I'm going to try that. It is. It ends up being really cool, especially if you have an accountability partner for you. And so my wife and I did it. We just said, we're going to commit to writing something in day one every day leading up to Christmas and sitting down together and reviewing those things that, that we felt like were worth sharing with each other ended up being really special. Um, and, and you don't really have an idea of just how special it is once you, cause once you publish it to Facebook, it's just gone. It's just out there and it zips off of the timeline. It is so fleeting that it, the utility of it is just, there, there is such little utility of that one piece, mm-hmm. but, um, and, and I am, I, I think there's a lot to love about Facebook. I, I really do right, uh, right. in terms You're of what it does. You're not saying never look at it, I'm not but saying you don't need to be it. looking at it all the, all time, the time throughout the day because right. you're waiting in line for and, something. And yeah. you may find that you are in a great space, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks to put Facebook back on your phone and be able to balance the two. I just want you to, I encourage you to experience what it's like without it and find this as a replacement, this act of actively writing a, just a couple of sentences about your experience every day will increase mindfulness and increase your ability to integrate what you are learning about yourself every day as you try to build new habits. I love it. That's good. My, that's good my good stuff. Good. All right. Well, it was way too long, so I apologize for that. <laughs> but you know, I have so much fun doing these things. Sometimes I just can't shut up. Well, and it's been a long time since we've done a tech episode. I think since last year. So, I know, so maybe you I've were due. It. <laughs> okay. You, you were due it. this show. I will take it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this is great. Thank you, Pete. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a blog post this week, um, and I'm going to highlight some of my favorites that, that you mentioned here. So I'm, I know you're going to have the show notes yes. um, available for everybody that's listening to, but I, I there's a few in here that really caught my eye and uh, I want to pay a little more attention to. So I'm going to write those in the blog as well, just to let people know. So check that out as well. Awesome. 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 Well, this is perfect. So thank you everybody for, for listening and downloading. Nikki, thank you for your patience with me and my digital nerdery. And uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.